Blood for the Blood God. <laughs> Bits. I kept that one quiet so I wouldn't uh, blow out your eardrums here. <laughs> What's going on, hobby maniacs? I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are back with the new corn releases for Age of Sigmar. That's right, another year, more corn releases. <laughs> I guess we saw the first book in 2015, uh, second book in 2017, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it was 2017, and now two years later, we have the third book in the installment of Corn Goodness here. Of course, all the accoutrement that would go with it, the new terrain piece, the new endless spells. Oh wait, Judgments of Corn. <laughs> A couple of new characters, and then of course, the new units here that came in the Wrath and Rapture box that we saw back there around the holidays in 2018. We're not going to talk a whole lot about these guys today because we've already unboxed them and put them together. I'll actually link it in uh, the comments below so you guys can check out that unboxing and build video as well. But today it's going to be all about the terrain piece and the skull taker. I want to put those bad boys together for you all and show you how dope they are because I imagine they're going to be pretty big. But this looks kind of small, so I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be feculent gar narmal size or what have you there. So let's run down the pricing real quick and then jump in and take a closer look at all of these great products that are coming out this weekend. So first off, you got the blades of corn. Uh, skull altar and the reason i think it's kind of small besides the fact that i looked at it and i'm already like yeah it's pretty small is that it's 35 dollars so it's not quite as big as the gloom spire gets uh terrain that came out or any of those ones that were uh came out there previous right so 35 dollars for this you got the war scroll cards uh that are the normal 25 dollars and we'll take a closer look at those real quick and then we've got of course the battle tome as well that's coming out uh for 40 dollars us i think 40 dollars us and there's a lot of duplicated stuff in here but there's also some new stuff too from you know since the necroquake and all that stuff at from last year so it is kind of new but it's got uh you know it's got a lot of existing content when you already have two you're gonna have duplicate content so to speak but it's not it's not 100 percent duplicated but there's a lot of stuff in here if you play corn i mean i don't play corn and i've already noticed oh okay oh oh all right that's the same so don't worry it's gonna be an easy transition you've probably already seen a preview video on it all and you've probably already be like okay cool i got it i'm an expert on this right now whereas i am not <laughs> but i'll tell you about some, uh, making some models right you got karenak that's 35 dollars. he's right there he's gonna come in a clam pack we'll show you that here in a second the flesh hounds of corn uh they are they are great looking models we've already seen these here on the channel these guys are coming in at fifty dollars for the five of them right there then you've got the new herald the blood master he's 25 skull taker is 35 and the judgments of corn not to be confused with pesky pesky spells are 35 dollars as well the new judgments of corn box is a two sprue set right here as you can tell they are the mini size sprue not the full on sprue well they are when you put them together right there and you can check that out but they're i mean they look cool now this is the chinese plastic it's a little bit tougher it's a little bit more chunkier there's a little bit less detail but they've gotten better about that you can see in uh, all the detail right here like there's little swirls there's bubbles but there's still a lot of flat area in here which you would kind of expect because it's blood so no big deal but you can see in here there's a little bit of flat area around the skull there's still a lot of flat area so you're going to want to be very careful use some tricks with blending you know using an airbrush using spray cans something washes uh, you want to be very very careful here that you don't have something that looks uh, very dull now on uh the wrath of corn that's coming out of the the realm splitting the realms asunder it's it's kind of flat but there's some gouges and stuff in there that you're going to be able to get some wash in down here in this cracked earth this all looks good and then you've got uh the weeping what is it the weeping symbol i think it's that way yeah it's that way and you can tell there i mean it's got detail but there are some flatter areas so be careful with all that as they go together, I mean, it's pretty simple. Just left and right halves. You put the axe on the front there. They actually don't tell you to put them on the base, strangely enough. I don't know what that's about, but the uh, the little skulls go on a 60 mil base, and there's two of those. 
and the bigger uh, terrain bits here are going to fit on a 105. Now, if you base them on that, you notice that there's a lot more space on the, the 105 base. You may want to consider using some Vallejo pumice or this resin sand from Liquitex. It's got uh, it's more of a chunkier texture that won't recede like a pumice will because pumice is just paint, whereas this is true texture. Just some ideas there to throw around the lip of the base so that you don't have all that empty space right there. Like you're going to notice this one's a little bit worse. So you're going to have lots of empty space right there. But you can work it in and maybe use, once you get the texture down, use the crackle uh, paints from GW2 and make a really good effect there. There was a time when we would get a release and all we would get would be one little character to go with it or maybe just a codex book or a battle tome, but those days are over. We've got the multi-kit releases with terrain and stuff, and today we've got the Broodmaster along with a lot of other things. So this is just your Herald of Corn, you know, to put them together. Uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, easier, it looks like, than a normal blood letter. Normal blood letters are left and right uh, feetsies. This is left and right feet, but it isn't like multiple halves to go together it looks like the back is all one piece so that's going to go on there and you're going to get the little blood letter frill br 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 quills i don't know what those are and then left and right hands and it looks like the head actually goes together very similar to the blood letter kit the new multi-part plastic kit there and he's got a little chain hanging off him with a little i think that's the skull yeah it's a little skull right there now he does come on a 40 mil base which makes sense because he is a herald but he's probably not gonna we're not gonna put him together he's probably not gonna be as big as skull taker but he's got some really good detail on him so you can definitely tell him apart whereas before you used to have to take one off the uh skull cannon or something like that to have a quote-unquote herald i guess they, did they have a herald i feel like they did in that fine cast i feel like it was just the skull taker there so now we got the brood the blood master and he's uh 25. all right before we get to the big assembly part let's talk about rules let's talk about the new book so coming in hot is the new battle tome for 40 dollars and the war scroll cards right here for 25 and i think there's 37 of these and they're going to come with the command points the little token punch out things that you can use these for objectives for some of the missions in the book uh, and they've got some of the effects to mark on the, on there as well. Command points, five blood ties, regular blood ties right here, and some of the other Killing Frenzy, Lord of the Blood Hunt. Um, I think Karanak has got one where he picks that dude. I forget what it is. But those are pretty cool to keep track of things. And then I love the new format of the new Age of Sigmar uh, War Scroll cards where everything is right here, right all in front. It's nice. It's small. There's no waste. It's I mean, a Skull Altar doesn't really have stat lines, so to speak. But for some of these other ones, boom. No wasted space. Look at all that. That is amazing. This is so well done. This is everything we've been wanting us on the 40k side, I think. Well, and Sigmar, because remember, they, these are the reboot since uh, 2.0. But, you know, over in the 40k land, we still, we're still got buster ones of these that you can literally put two of these in it. I don't know. For all things uh, sacred to the hobby, please, Games Workshop, give us 40k players these type formats because these are just so much better and then look when there's too much text little fold out no big deal it's a full i mean this is so this is so much easier to put on the table i love it i love the format i love everything about it i love all the tokens and everything uh, i can't wait for these to finally get ported over uh to 40k you know what i'm not even gonna try closing that because why why do it okay then we get to the blades of corn again this is a 127 page book just like the previous one but it is going to have a lot more material than you've probably already seen previews uh like i said there earlier now the table of contents is going to give you all sorts of options here obviously here's all the war scrolls then you've got all the uh where are the battle the battalions are actually i don't know where the battalion oh, i know they're in the f they're in the front here so this is your painted miniature section the bringers of carnage I think they're right up here. Uh, they actually have a painted section in here that tells you how to paint your miniatures uh, without having to you know, go over to get the tutorials and stuff. And you've got all the bestiary section right here and then talking about all the stuff that's happened with the Necroquake and all that stuff, uh, you know, recent events in the past two years that the book has basically uh, come out since and all the events and things like that. Pitch Battle Profiles, two pages of them in the back. You know, just scrolling through it, let's find those battalions. And of course, they got the Path to Glory stuff in here. So then, you know, lavish look at all the painted miniatures, which really gets you going. There's a lot of new artwork in here, stuff I hadn't seen before, uh, which you can kind of see as they start going through all the recent events, talking about how he's mad at Nagash and everything is going sideways since the Age of Chaos uh, kind of came to the end now. It's more of a uh, more of the Age of Sigmar because they're all taking it back. 
taking it to the streets, taking it back. Then, then you've got, uh, where are the battalions? I don't know, they're in here somewhere, so I assure you. Ah, here they are. Okay, so you got the terrain. It talks about uh, some of the special rules, the blood blessings and stuff. Some of these are the same, but some of the six ones are different and new now. And then, of course, you've got the judgments in here, which are the anti or the complete polar opposite of the endless spells. And, of course, if you have the skull altar in play, you can re-roll the prayer and judgment rolls for friendly corn priests within eight which is kind of clutch because I think they cast on a 3, 4, and a 5. And the 5 one's pretty good. You're going to want that in play. That definitely is a, is a good one there. And uh, so then being able to reroll, re it's really great. So then now you've got the battalion. So here's all the War Scroll battalions. And then you got some battle plans. And, oh, Path to Glory stuff. And you get into more of the... Oh, those are the... Oh, okay, sorry. Those are the factions. I forgot they did that now. So there's all your factions, and they give you specific command traits, artifacts, and command abilities. And then you get into the War Scrolls here, and the War Scroll Battalions at their head. And there's a lot of them, just like we saw before. There's definitely a lot of those right there. Now, as far as new models go, not a whole lot on that. You've got the uh, Judgments. You've got the uh, Altar. But that's pretty much it. And then, of course, they've updated the entries for the uh where is it skull taker and karanak both been updated uh, i don't think anything changed with the flesh hounds but they are in here as well and then getting to the back you've got all of the new judgments the pitch battle profiles are now two pages long as well so great book obviously if you play corn you need it uh definitely recommend picking up the war scroll cards as well also, just real quick, if you go to the store and in your confusion and excitement for new corn, you forget what the cover looks like, don't buy the one with the blood letter on it. That's the old one from 2017. But as you can see, they are literally the same size. There's just a little bit more content in the new one here, along with all the new points changes and new units. Now onto the assembly portion of the video here. We're going to take a look at Skull Taker, and hopefully he is uh, quite large and in charge, judging by the size of his miniature on that 40 mil base right there. He definitely is. He has the Cloak of Skulls. He's got the Slayer Sword, which is the uh, actual physical award for the overall champion of the Golden Demon competition. Or I don't think it's best to show. Well, it might be best to show. It's like whoever they decide had the best miniature right there. We haven't seen one here in the States since, I think, 2000. 12. Um, I know there hasn't been one in Baltimore since 2010, although they might have had one in Memphis in 2013 that I had forgotten about. Uh, so we'll look at that sprue here in a second. As far as the miniature goes, it uh, appears that it goes together assembly wise pretty easily, left and right half there. Torso goes on, and then there's a front attachment to the torso with some uh, muscles, and you've got this little uh, tabard that hangs down and a little WWE Skull Championship belt right there and then you've got some parts that actually attach to the base and the cloak of skulls on the back there looks to lock in we'll see how easy all this is to put together you got the little fin on the back that attaches underneath or over top of the it's hard to tell right there and then you've got some attachments that's the skull shoulder pad we'll go to the brass skull shoulder pad and arm there with the fiery skull and then his head which is an assembly of it looks like the tongue with a little uh, notch there to lock it into place and you got the back demon cranium thing that locks in and that's that's pretty much it uh, rules wise I'm actually not sure if this is uh, new. Oh, yeah, these are new. These were in uh, Wrath and Rapture We have showed you this skull taker uh, just glancing at this looks to be his existing rules out of the current demon book He's I think 84 points ish and I'm pretty sure he does all this stuff, although I'm not sure if he has this unstoppable ferocity. So I, I think he was rumored to be in the new Vigilus um, Ablaze book, but it's unclear if uh, Corn Demons will get some sort of um, detachment bonus stratagem type support as they seem to all kind of be aligning up release-wise for this from the old Wrath and Rapture box. They came out at the holidays, and then, of course, this release for Age of Sigmar. So, boom, there it is. All right, so let's look at the sprue here. So the sprue's looking fresh. This is the normal multi-pair plastic that they manufacture in England currently. You've got a really dope looking base here, lots of sorts of skulls erupting up from the ground, so lots of room to do some OSL crazy glow stuff right there. The cape's looking fresh with a corn symbol on the back that you could definitely have some fun painting. And then the front 
looks like everything's pretty well done. He just looks like a ginormous blood letter with a WWE corn skull championship belt right there and some crazy details going down on this, uh, we'll call it a cock road <laughs> for lack of a better term. And then the uh, looks like the torso is this going on here. I don't know what's going on with that. I guess it just gets covered up. Hmm. I don't know what goes on that back half, I guess. I would assume this just covers it up and they just left it open and make it hollow, spend less material. So you've got the flaming skull there, the slayer sword, and the little, uh, whatever these are, demon stalactites coming up out of the ground. Looks, looks pretty easy enough. Let's see how it goes together. Whew, so there he is. Look at this beast right here. It's really cool to see a newer plastic version of a model anytime from Games Workshop coming over from the pewter line. I mean, he's so dynamic. He's just standing there almost doing a Captain Morgan pose or Commander Riker, whichever you want to say. But I mean, he's about 12 years old. Came out 2007, 2008, I believe, with the split demon release there for 40K and Fantasy right around the same time. Looks great. Um, you know, size wise, we're going to compare him here in a second. He's got the Slayer Sword, so lots of room to show off. All of the detail is, I mean, he's got depth underneath here. Look at this. Look at all that work you can do on the cape and everything. The skull looks great. It's on fire, but it's also kind of weeping right there and stuff. Well, weeping blood. And the face looks really, really good and devious. You know, all that three-dimensional tricks they've learned with the blood letters kind of ported over to this one right here and then the back. The skull cape is all one piece. The base looks great. Let's see how he compares to some of these models. So you got Karn. Mr. The Betrayer actually is smaller than the Skull Taker. Look at that. Who would have suspected that one? And then you've got the uh, Spoil Pox Scrivener. Old Spoily looking fresh on his 40 mil base. Now this is a resin base from MicroArt Studios, but it definitely compares to the GW one right there. And they are about the same size because they are Herald, so that kind of makes sense. But I would imagine that the uh, had we put the Bloodmaster together, he would have been a little bit smaller. And there's your typical Primaris Duder on a 32 mil base, definitely dwarfed by that. And then just a man, it's just the boy. You can see our Steel Legion, or excuse me, our, our Death Corps Kriegsman. Everything looks the same in 40k almost, uh, looking fresh right there as well. So very interesting size wise. Let's take a look at the altar and see how big that's going to be. So the skull altar uh, is labeled Age of Sigmar, but supposedly it'll be 40k rules for it. I suspect, rules in there of course, uh, I suspect this thing is going to be about the same size, like I was saying, as the Nurgle tree that came out so many years ago. Assembly wise, it looks to be very easily as you just put the sides together, put the steps on, and then you've got some octagonal, octagonal, however you say that word, walls that go around the sides there, and then the big uh, corn antlers, we'll call them, going up the side. Uh, I imagine there's gonna be some flash on this thing, and we're, we're gonna put it together, not quite worry about that. And then you've got the last two pieces right there once you get everything assembled. So the back, is gonna have some space. You can choose to close it up if you want. It looks to be hollow underneath it. And then you cap the two antlers right there with the big symbol of corn. And then there's the skull altar, but no 40K rules on this. So it almost makes me wonder if that was an afterthought that, hey, you know, we could do something for 40K as well. When they wrote up Vigilus, it's really hard to say because, well, we're not a GW and we don't have that information for you, but just something to think about. So here is the sprues themselves. And you can tell, again, this is that larger, kind of chunkier Chinese resin, so to speak. Let's try to get some better light on that. Just give you an idea. Now it isn't completely bare. There's some areas right here that are, but there's a little bit of a texture in here that you can definitely paint with and have some fun with. And you don't have to be as careful for it being flat. And then of course, all the skulls everywhere. So you get used to, get used to throwing some bone color on there and hitting it with a wash because you're definitely not gonna wanna paint all the skulls, I wouldn't think. And then the side pieces right here look to be pretty well detailed as well. You got all sorts of skull detail down there and some on the wall panels and then all the studs and everything and all of the trim per the norm and the steps right there. I have a couple of skulls because why not? And then you've got the little accessory, the we'll call them razor buttresses that go on each side of uh, kind of forming a little um, 
uh, like a flechette on an arrow, like the little feathers. That's kind of what it's doing there. All right, well, let's put this together and see exactly how big it is. So as it turns out, it is about as big as, as the sprue was, as you can see right here. Now there's that little flechette pattern that I was just talking about on the sides right there, little knife murder buttresses. They go on each side and then you've got, what's underneath the stairs? Well, there's some sort of crazy skull overflow vent thing right there that I didn't notice before. And you got piles and piles of skulls all around this base. And then up top, you've got all the trim and all the accessories and then boom, the big cornate symbol right there. Now, you could have some fun painting this. Obviously, an airbrush would save you a lot of time. We've got some links on uh, some of the airbrushes and stuff we recommend, but I definitely want to put you on to something right here we've been doing with our Titanicus, and that is Sharpie, metallic Sharpie markers. Once you get a good prime coat on there, and you can use the Army Painter system because they've got a really nice red spray, actually several red sprays, in fact, uh, that would look good on this. But once you get that red spray on there, you can do some bronze, and then to highlight the bronze, you could do the silver as well. And let me tell you what, this will look super great and save you tons and tons of time doing all of that ridiculous amount of trim on all this. So for any chaos stuff, really, uh, it will definitely save you a lot of time. So keep that in mind. We'll put the link to the Sharpies in the comments below too. So there's our skull taker. There's our throne, our altar, and fits right in there. Just locks right in place. Looks really good. I can't wait to get this painted up and then on the 40k side of things well there's mr mr carney mr the betrayer but he looks good up top there as well so lots and lots of cool corn stuff coming out and more and more chaos coming our way next week for warhammer 40k where we've got finally the re birth of the war master after 20 years the Abaddon model was old enough to go to graduate high school by now <laughs> um, but we got the new one we got lots more coming next week the vigilus books hopefully rules for this little bad boy right here uh in warhammer 40k and who knows sky's pretty much the limit on the chaos space marine side of things right there so that's it for this one thanks for watching our unboxing and build of not all the new corn models, but some of them. <laughs> and a brief overview of the new Battle Tome as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.